The galactic center is located at 26 degrees Sagittarius. And we are there now, now. In the heart of consciousness, beyond the realm of space and time, the cosmic power of transformation is upon us here in the galactic center. It's a mystical adventure and a better way to live. Finding harmony and balance in a journey to the light that lies within. So let the psychic cruise begin. your mind, unwind the time. Welcome to the Galactic Center. Center. Hi there, I'm Safrina. Welcome to the New Millennium Expo. Get ready for everything cutting edge on yoga, chronic healing, crystal healing, lots of panel discussions, and a whole lot more. It's not just an expo, it's a food drive. And here's Mark Becker to tell us about all the wonderful cans of food that you've collected today. Yes, actually all these uh, buckets were filled with food and this goes to Food for Survival. And they deliver food to the homeless all over the city. So here at the New Millennium Expo, we're doing a collection and you get in free if you bring two cans of food on Fridays. That's right. And uh, last time at the New Life Expo, you also had a food drive. Yes, and that we donated to We Are Family. And each time we do an expo, what we do is we donate it to a different organization uh, for the homeless. And it's a win-win, and that's what makes things go around. You give and you receive. And it's definitely in the spirit of the New Millennium. Yes. Now, Mark, you've been doing the New Life Expo for how many years? A New Life Expo for 10 years. And, uh, new and this, is, this is, is the first, first new, millennium. New, millennium. First the new Millennium, new millen expo. Yes. New millennium, new millennium. expo. This yeah. is so great. Yeah. Now, why is this one different? Well, New Life concentrates on holistic health and alternative medicine. And this concentrates on anything cutting edge for the New Millennium, opening your mind to the possibilities of what can be. Uh, so it can be anything from cutting edge medicine to uh, human potential, to environmental, to metaphysical, to spiritual, all possibilities. And basically what I want to do is, is have people realize all they have to do is open up their minds to reach their maximum potential. This contraption looks like something straight from Atlantis. They used to use sound, color, and light for healing, according to the legends. But here it is at the expo. So now tell us about the healings sure. that you do. Sure. You are a natural healer, yes? Um, I, work, I work with people in a private practice, yes. Um, I use the unit as a part of my healing work. Uh, what a full session would run approximately an hour and a half. We would do a 20 minute intake interview in which we talk specifically about your situation, your body, where you draw energy when you need it, where you draw your strength, where you tend to lose energy in your body, what aches, those kinds of information is very helpful to us. Mm -hmm. And then together we design a program using different frequencies of colored light and white light to balance and clear the chakra energy systems of the body. I tend to feel a heat, um, almost a rising or a, f a, a fluffing under my hands, similar to a half of an orange. This is called triangulation. It's similar to how they find aircraft when they're lost in the woods. 
One hand is on the beam, the other hand is sensing, the third point of the triangle is her chakra itself. When that beam is aligned, the energy rises into my left hand, and I know I have a direct connection with that energy center of the body. So I've connected the heart, we've connected the throat, now we move up to the area of intuition, the third eye. It's the same process. The idea is to support and align the entire chakra system of the body. It's different in every client. That's why it's important to have a practitioner who has had some training and some background and some mileage. So if you are weak, you just go under a tree and absorb the energy. You can hug the tree for a few minutes. Make sure that your neighbor is not watching you. <laughs> especially, especially if you're doing it for 30 minutes. And this is Del Pei from the Center for Pranic Healing. We just attended his lecture. It was wonderful. It was about how you too can learn to heal with your own hands. Do you want to tell the viewers a little bit, a little something about how you can learn to do that? You see, everybody has the ability to heal. With two hands, you can absorb energy from one hand and give it to the other person. You can also use your hands as like a broom or a sweeper or a, like, say, vacuum cleaner to suck out the dirty energy toxins of the person's uh, energy field, which makes him sick. Basically, it's about prana, the pranic healing where everything is energy. Do you mm -hmm. want to talk a little about that? Yeah, prana has a lot of sources. The sun is the major source which energizes the air, which creates the air prana or the air globule, which you breathe in with oxygen and vitalizing your nervous system and your system. You also absorb energy from the earth through uh, root crops, through the trees, and or uh, through walking. You can also absorb solar prana from the morning sun, better than the afternoon sun, because uh, it gives you more green and blue and violet uh, rays of energy. The, in the afternoon it's more orangey and more red, so it's more cancerous as they say. So it's healthier to have sun bath in the morning, even for babies, for children, or for weak people. So these are the pranic uh, sources. You can also eat different colors of food, like vegetables, especially fruits, and these are uh, sources of uh, synthetic prana from food. Red meat has more red energy which can stimulate cancer and other uh, systems that causes a viral infection in others. So I've also heard that eating red meat makes you more violent or more in your lower chakras, is that true? Yeah, because red meat has also the inheritance of energy from the dying uh, animal. Dying being, flesh, yeah. yes. And also, uh, it has a coarser energy than, uh, than uh, fruits and vegetable. So any coarse energy will stimulate more of uh, uh, diseases. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the books that you have, because I know these okay. are wonderful. These are the ones that you were just talking about. This is uh, pranic psychotherapy, which deals with uh, emotional, mental disorders. Uh, in fact, I, from, I'm speaking for myself, I can heal phobias over one session, a few minutes, traumas, obsessions, compulsions, very easy to heal. Smoking, alcoholism, dr drug addiction can be healed in a few sessions. Of course, alcoholism takes more time. Depression, physical and psychological, can be healed in a few sessions, very easy. So fear of flying, yeah. boom, it's gone in one session. I can heal it in one session. I've okay. healed a lot of them. <laughs> smoking, I've healed a lot of people smoking in one session. Wow. Okay, we have advanced. your textbook for advanced pranic healing. Yes? This is one of the most advanced uh, books in he energy science. It deals with colors, how to heal using color energy from different chakras. <laughs> Follow the bouncing ball, or in this case, the David Hall. Hi, David. <laughs> that was very cute. Hello, Safrida. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Tell us about the Cellar Sizer. Cellar Sizer is just a different form of exercise that doesn't function on certain muscle groups, but functions on the entire muscular skeletal system nearly 100 times a minute. When I Cellar Size, instead of putting weight on this muscle, I put weight on the entire muscular skeletal system every time I come down at the bottom of the bounce. The increase of weight on the body 
is applied to every muscle, connective tissue, ligament, tendon, bones, even skin cells get firmer and stronger to compensate for the weight. When I started eight years ago, I had a double chin and a belly. I do not lift any weights. Every area of my body has gotten stronger just from 10 minutes a day of jumping up and down on this rebounder. And that's all you do to and get a body all, like this. That is all I did. That's all I do. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you my program real quick. Okay. I start with two minutes of the health bounce. This is what a baby does when they first stand up in a crib anywhere in the world. They jump on the couch, they jump on the bed. We should have never stopped doing it. After two minutes of this, this opens up the lymphatic and increases circulation through all areas of the body. Then I do my aerobics. This aerobic exercise eliminates up to seven-eighths of the jar to your skeletal system. I don't have to worry about ankle problems, knee problems, shin splints, and lower back problems. Then I do my calisthenics. Now, when I began, I wanted to get rid of my belly. I hold on to a door jam. We have a bar you can get, and I simply do 40 of these. Much more intense than a sit-up. A sit-up simply puts your weight on certain muscle groups. A rebounder puts your weight on the entire muscular skeletal system. At the same time, those muscles are flexing. For the waist and the hips, I do 40 of these. Every time I come down, this whole area of the body is flexing with weight on it. That's how I got rid of the uh, love handle. The baby fat, the yeah. love handle. I didn't love them anyway. I don't even know why they call them that. <laughs> but, but they're gone. Yeah. To strengthen the lower back and the buttocks, this lifts, tightens, and tones the whole back side. I can put my hands against the wall or on my bar, and I simply kick back like this. Every but this comes with instructions. It does. It comes with instructions to show people how to gently begin. So that and you can hold on to a doorknob. You can hold on to a doorknob or we have a bar. You can actually attach a bar to the unit and you can hold on to the bar for balance. In fact, you see that on the picture right behind you. See the, the bar? That gentle bar, that bar right there, I had to hold on to something when I first began. The bar wasn't available. I held on to a door jam. Okay, I'm going to try this now and I'm going to hold on to you. All right, Sabrina. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I got the shoes do. for it. What we're going to do, let me hold this. I want you to take your hands, put them on your trapezius muscles right back here. Hold on to those muscles with both hands I'm if you can. I'm bouncing already. Yeah. <laughs> hold on Rock to the muscles. <laughs> can you feel the muscles flexing? Oh, yes. There's weight on them. Every oh. time you come down, it's like taking 20% of your body weight, putting it on top of you, but instead of pushing it away from gravity, you're increasing gravity or weight on the body as you jump up and down. Those are the muscles that hold up our posture, and those muscles are flexing. They will tighten and tone. But it, flexing. It's not just those muscles. How many, how many cells of your body are jumping up and down with you? I feel a lot of things lifting over That's here. That's right. That's called cellar <laughs> sizing. It's not exercise. It's, cell, it's 75 trillion cells. David, thank you so much. Sabrina, that was great. My pleasure. Thank you. As the planet shifts in vibration, it's almost like a re-encoding blueprint is coming in. How many of you meditate? How many of you have been getting any kind of uh, codes or symbols or you know things you didn't understand but you were seeing something like this in your meditation? You know, you know, when you meditate, just roll your, your brain into that intention. They look like an extraterrestrial language. They sort of look like Hebrew. You must remember everything is not set in stone. There is not one future that is, uh, is you cannot be changed. This is what a lot of people don't understand. There are many probabilities and possibilities of every action that we take. And there are many timelines going off from any given circumstance. And it can be the worst to the least. The bottom line is, and let me give you the good news and the bad news is, the good news is, is that our future and our destiny has been placed back in the hands of mankind. The bad news is, is our future and our destiny has been placed back in the hands of mankind. This is Dolores Cannon. She's been a hypnotherapist for over 20 years and the author of 10 books on the paranormal. Now, Dolores, you just took part in the prophecy panel, yes? Yes, I did, because I am a hypnotherapist. I am not a psychic. I'm not a channeler. But I have three books out on the prophecies of Nostradamus. It's the first time all 1,000 of the prophecies have been interpreted. So I'm asked, usually asked to be on this type of panel, because everybody wants to know what's going to happen to them in the future. Everyone wants to know the future. And of course, Nostradamus is one of the most famous. However, uh, in the panel, the word did get out that whatever he predicted does not necessarily have to be coming true because the future is malleable and we have the power to change it. Yes, this is what I tell all over the world and I travel to many countries every year is that to tell them that Nostradamus was showing us the most horrible worst case scenarios and that we do have the power to change them. Any psychic has to get your attention 
And the only way he can get your attention is to tell you what will happen if the very worst that will happen. So he wanted us to know that we can change the future by the power of our own mind. We create our own reality. Now, Dolores has been given the green light to be the reporter for the unknown. What can you tell us about Atlantis? Okay, in my work I ask many, many questions about all of the mysteries and in a future book that I'm working on now, it's going to be a whole section on Earth mysteries and Atlantis is definitely one of them. Anything that's unknown is what mm -hmm. I look after. But uh, that was a time when mankind abused the powers of the mind. They had developed the powers of the mind to such an extent they could create literally anything they wanted. Mm -hmm. But they began, became bored and they began using it in negative ways. So they ended up really destroying the world with the powers of the abuse of the powers of their mind. So after that, this was like short circuited and taken away. And we're now getting into the point where we are beginning to use the powers of our mind again. We just have to be careful that we don't do it in the wrong way again. Not to repeat past mistakes. This is it. Now there again, the technology used in the pyramids in Egypt uh -huh. and uh, around Mexico and Guatemala, isn't that Atlantean technology that they built them with using sound vibration? Yes, this is one thing I have found out. Even my books on, I have two books on the missing years of Jesus and the mm -hmm. great temple of Jerusalem was also built of the same kind of blocks. People don't really realize that because the Romans destroyed it. Mm -hmm. But it was the same huge blocks that were put together with no seam, you know, no concrete, and you can't even put a card in between them. Mm -hmm. These are the same kind of blocks that I saw at Machu Picchu in Peru. Mm -hmm. It all went to the same time period. They were all being built at the same time. And we have, uh, the information I have, that a lot of it was done with sound. Mm -hmm. The levitation right. of the rocks was done with sound. Everywhere there's a mystery, I like to follow up on it. I've been in the crop circles because if I lecture about it and write about it, I want to know it firsthand. Absolutely. What can you tell us about what you experienced in the crop circle? Oh, that was fantastic. They warned me when I went in there that some people have gotten sick in the crop circles because really? of the energy. Mm -hmm. They couldn't take it. And I said, well, if it has something to do with the energy, apparently I was very compatible because to me it was the most wonderful experience I've ever had. Now that's quite interesting because uh, on the news some people came forward in England and said that they themselves were using tools to create the crop circles. Do you think no, some no, of them no. are man-made and some of them are really no, from UFOs? The, the ones I have been in were definitely not man-made. The people who said they did this, I wish they would give them a feel and say, okay, go out here and show us how you were able to do it in a matter of minutes with no one seeing you do it. Mm -hmm. The uh, designs are absolutely perfect. They're mathematically correct. The grain is not broken, which would happen if they said they drug a board around because those fields are ready to be harvested. Mm -hmm. The grain is bent and interwoven like a French rug, like a braided rug. Wow. And they have, the molecular structure of the grain itself has been changed. Now that cannot happen if somebody's doing this. They have put the grain in microwaves and to bend it. And this is the only way it can be bent without breaking. So there's some kind of an energy involved similar to microwaves. Mm -hmm. And uh, where these have appeared, there is no way it could have been done without someone seeing it. Especially to measure them out, absolutely perfect. So what did you feel in the crop circles? And in other words, this really was an extraterrestrial force that created them and well, you had great energy in there? Well, in my work, see, in the books I'm writing now, I've got three more books coming out and I've gone into depth in this. And it is definitely an energy. It's not extraterrestrial per se. It is coming from other dimensions as part okay. of it. It's much more complicated yeah. than people realize. Yeah. The ETs may be involved, but it also deals with other dimensions. Right and energy forces that we as earthlings have no in inkling of. So it might just be coming from divine beings <laughs> or divine it, well, energy. What they said it is, uh, the ETs and the people in the other dimensions, they work with concepts, mind-to-mind -mind communication, not verbal as we do. Mm -hmm. So they are used to dealing with symbols that will contain much information in one symbol, one concept. Mm -hmm. And these are the guys that photograph aliens in New Jersey. This is Tommy Hawksblood and Brian Williams, otherwise known as Sargell 18. Yes? Yes. Okay. Tell us about all the aliens that you photograph in your vortex near where you live in Jersey. Well, that's where we first met them, mm -hmm. in Wanakew, New Jersey. And we met face to face, and I have the photographs of the actual meeting of myself and the Indorian aliens. And uh, since then, um, the new 
development that's come up is basically Tommy and myself, and they've also given him this disability, are now carrying the Vortex with us. And I had Tommy shoot in the last two days right here at the expo in the room where I'm giving the lectures on the panel, and we have shot over 40 pictures with orbs and creatures in the room right next to the people. And what I hope to do today is at the, at the workshop and the lecture is shoot again and put the pictures up right away on the TV so people can see as they're sitting there what's sitting next to them. Tommy, what's the explanation for that? Do you think they're just checking in and out of dimensions to come into our reality? No, they're around us now and they're really watching us. They're trying to see what's happening with our dimension because they will be coming into our dimension in full real soon. So now, you, you think they're going to be manifesting in the physical? Yes, they will be. Because yesterday when I started shooting, I saw one directly between two people, crystal clear. And I shot two pictures with my camera, they both came out. And I shot one with the other camera and it was still there. So it was actually making more of a physical appearance than being a shadow or an image that we're just catching with us with the second uh, like shot of a camera. How do you know that it's not the person's spirit guide that showed up on film? Well, we're, we're working on our own conclusions about that and we feel most spirits are a lot littler because when we work with these crystals out in, the, in the, the area where we go, there are, there's hundreds of little spirits and then there's these big ones that come around and they do a lot more different things. Where the little ones are going into the light and I really feel like it's crossing spirits over into the next dimension or the next world that they go into. Um, and Brian, do tell us now, what is your work in all of this? I know that you maintain that you've been chosen for a specific mission here on Earth. Well, if the mission holds to what it's going, um, how, how it has gone, by this time next year I should have one of the Endorians with me to speak at this expo. Okay, so one of the Endorians will be with you here at the next expo. This is how the predictions go. By January of 1999 I should have met again with these aliens and as they say they're going to let one come through to uh, meet with humankind. And if I'm lucky enough that this happens to me, that this does happen, um, you're going to have to pick me up the, off the floor with a spoon. <laughs> well, seeing is believing, yes? Now tell me, is that uh, not unlike Babaji, who's said to also manifest um, through different dimensions? Sometimes he's able to take physical form? I'm not sure on that. Tommy would know more about Babaji, but I want the alien to be here just like you're talking to him, just like you're talking to me in third dimension. Mm -hmm. So the actual physical being standing here and, you know, everybody kind of like gaga eyed at it and right. looking at it. Right. That's what I want to do. All right, now what does that have to do with the illumination of mankind? Because really we're all here to find our soul freedom. And what do the aliens appearing have to do with that? Well, that's going to give us, I believe, the culture shock enough to wake us up so that we can handle the earth changes. Because humankind, they come, they look, wow, this is interesting, let me buy your book. They go home, they remember they got the mortgage at the end of the week, they got to pay the bills, get the kids to PTA, they forget about it. Mm -hmm. So the aliens are coming now and manifesting and bringing this evidence out because it's going to shock the hell out of you. And it's going to make you listen, and then at that point your awareness elevates. You've probably heard of Hatha Yoga, possibly Sita Yoga, and Raja Yoga. But now we're going to talk about Sahaja Yoga with Anna. Tell us, what is Sahaja Yoga? Uh, Sahaja Yoga is uh, a yoga that is, was started by Her Holiness Srimata Ji Nirmala Devi in 1970. Uh, yoga means union, a uh, union with the divine. Sahaja means spontaneous so that in Sahaja Yoga uh, the person experiences a spontaneous connection or a spontaneous union with the divine. Uh, Sahaja also means inborn so that in our yoga the awakening that we achieve in our yoga is a, an inborn innate, uh, innate uh, happening. And well, this it's our own kundalini, the force within our own kundalini yeah. waking up. And I know that you teach certain techniques for doing this, yes? Well, the, the, again, the aim of this yoga is the awakening of this inborn uh, energy that we all have. Uh, at the proper time in your evolution, it will be awakened. The chakras are the seven energy channels, centers that we all have which actually represent the seven major points in our evolution. 
you've probably heard about the Shakti, which is that force <laughs> within the Kundalini, the Shakti rising and then merging with the Shiva, the thousand petaled lotus in the brain. Mm -hmm. And then that this is enlightenment. Okay. So you teach techniques for doing this, breathing techniques that go along with Sahaja Yoga? We have many different tex techniques that we, that we uh, do in our yoga. We use our hands. A realized person who has, uh, has had his Kundalini awakened will uh, have the ability to awaken the Kundalini in another person. And if you can achieve your realization, your own Kundalini awakening, it's tremendous and it's free. <laughs> you should never have to pay for anything that has to do with the truth. You should never have to pay for uh, knowledge that you want that has to do with your spirit, with God, uh, with becoming your own guru. No, this is free. Enlightenment is free. It's in Manhattan. It's in uh, 33rd Street, is it? 30, 32nd, 32nd Street. Street. 30 tour. East 32nd Street, Friday evenings, 7.30 on the 11th floor. And, and also, because this show will be airing other places as well, you can call 1-800-269-YOGA or the Galactic Center and we'll let you know. If anybody is curious about the ascension, the ascension energy is the love. In these realizations of heart light, in these realizations of the fire of your soul, in these realizations, you are born again whole. They can raise their consciousness vibration in many ways, by toning, by connecting to source, by these energies of all that is. Prophecy panel is very special, as is all the panels. But the prophecy panel, uh, we have psychics and that will prophesy what will happen in the new millennium. And these are just not everyday people. Some of them have been on Strange Universe and mm -hmm. uh, the other side. And a lot of the prophecies that they had for 1997 have come true. So come to the panel and you'll see what's going to come true for 1998, 1999, and the new millennium. What's your personal take? My personal take is life is very special and it's as special as you can imagine it to be and to just open up your mind and imagine how you would like life to be and that's how it will be I agree yeah. just to to make it special to believe that you can make your dreams realities we do it every day at the Galactic Center I love it I love it <laughs>